Hello and welcome to the James Grant from Podcast Super Soul Model Series. Um, today's guest is Josie Spooner and she is a fantastic human being who I've known for a very long time actually and we've just reconnected and she is the founder of the Hive Minded Habits and she has also in her previous lifetime been a model booker. Welcome to the show Josie Spooner. Hello, James. It's lovely to reconnect with you after all of these years since I was your agent. Yes, you were. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome to the show. Welcome to the podcast. Um, we go back a long way, Josie, really. So it's, uh, it's great to have you on the show. I'm so interested to have a conversation with you and share it with the audience because you've had one wonderful journey. And it's so interesting that our paths have almost began and then gone out. We've gone on, done our own things, and then we've come back again and we've reconnected. So I'm really interested to share your story um, mm -hmm. with everything that you've been doing for the last, well, 17 years or so. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, wow. it's been a long That's time, isn't awesome, it? Isn't it? And, and then <laughs> share that with the audience, because I know that there's some absolute um, incredible practical tips, um, some stories, some stories of transformation for you that might be able to light up some ideas within the audience who are listening, because I know you've been on an incredible journey and I'd love you to share your story with us today. Thank you. Oh, well, it's such a pleasure. And you know, James, it's so, it's been so interesting, this journey of setting up Hive Minded, um, which is something that I've set up with my best friend of 21 years. And we've had this transformation this year where we were both celebrating our 40th year. We yeah. met each other when we were 19. And this year we were like, well, hang on, you've got the same path, life path. I've got the same life path. Let's have an adventure together. And it's like, yeah, why wouldn't we do that? And, you know, it's such a joy to have spent the whole of, well, this this very intense year, everyone's had their own journeys on it, but just to be able to connect in with each other uh, every day and to support each other. And, you know, connection is so important. You know, it. I think we take it for granted that we have people around all the time and that we've got people that we can energetically check in with. And when you can't do it, it's, well, it's, it's really hard. We are pack animals at the end of the day. That, that know, you know, human, human nature is such, isn't it, Josie? We've, you've just got to connect with people. And if you can't connect with people, you can, I think you just lose your center really, don't you? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's lucky that we've got like all this technology where we can connect with each other, but it's a kind of almost like a new way of connecting with each other. Whereas before it was always in person, and having that sort of kinesthetic feeling, being able to touch and give a hug. And, and now it's just like connecting over Zoom or connecting over the phone or FaceTime or, or whatever. It's, it's always interesting to see like how the dynamics of relationships change, but I think it's just connecting in with each other or having someone to check in with regularly that makes you feel, yeah. I don't know, more human, I guess. Yeah, it really does. And it, it's funny that you bring up kinesthetic because I'm an NLP practitioner okay. and I really resonate with being a kinesthetic person. So I'm always talking about feeling. And for me, it's all about the energy and the feeling of, of things. You know, that's that's what I get. So whenever um, I, I would also um, identify with being an empath. So I really feel people's energy. And I must admit the whole going online zoom thing for me it like one-on-one -on -one, it's great like I really enjoy it I really enjoy coaching I enjoy speaking to people individually but you know I mean I'm sure you've had them you know where you have those like oh let's all have a get together kind of thing and you just can't vibe with people you know because no but not everybody can talk at the same time so it's like I don't know energetically for me I find that kind of thing really challenging so I definitely really miss like big group setups yeah. um you know getting together with a whole range of different types of people um i'm lucky i've got i've got three sisters so i'm lucky that i've kind of yeah i've got a kind of like a built-in family tribe which is awesome so nice. uh, it's nice. been really nice when i've been able to see them but um but yeah you know we, we adapt we adapt that's the whole point of life isn't it i feel like this this whole year has just been one i call it a setup for something better mm, um, definitely and, and a lot of people will have had challenges and been suffering in different ways. But I think life is always going to challenge you. And I think it's always how you adapt and shift and move and create, which gives you that sort of sense of like, you know, I've got something of value to offer here. And there's something that's, you know, 
commandeering my soul, which says that I really want to create something wonderful for myself, but it's not just going to arrive on my lap. I have to walk towards it. I have to move towards it. And if it means, you know, getting online and being virtual, then so be it. It's not necessarily the route that I had in mind, but it's at least as if you're moving towards your, your own sort of personal goals. And um, yeah, interesting year for both you and I in many different ways. And I'm looking forward to to um, going into a little bit more depth about some of the, the other things. But um, what I wanted to do is, if possible, just give us a little history of what's been happening to you in the last sort of 17 odd years, Josie, because, you know, I want people to get to know your story and where you've been and where you are now and what you're creating with the hive minded habits. I mean, it's amazing. Um, but for the purpose of the audience, you know, just tell us what, you know, what you've been up to. OK, no worries. Well, look, let's start around the, the sort of time that you and I met which was, now let's think, 2001. Uh, Josie was uh, the uh, New Faces model agent at Models One. Um, and actually being a model agent is something that I did on and off over a 15 year period. So what would happen would be, I would be a model agent for a while and then I would go, oh my goodness, I need to go and do something else. This isn't for me. Like I must admit that there was some, always something really challenging for me about just treating people for their looks because I'm very much the kind of person who's interesting, interested in what's underneath. I'm always the why person. You know, why are you doing that? Why are you interested in that? Tell me about it. You know, I, I want to get to the nitty gritty and yeah. I've never... I've never settled for what is um, the information that's given to me. For example, if the news says something, I'm like, well, why is that? And what and what's in it for them? And what's the backstory? And and who wrote that? And you know, I'm 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 a I'm a researcher. You're a curious I'm individual, Josie, aren't you? That's what you are, and that's great. Yeah, I'm a curious. I'm super curious, and I always have been super curious. So anyway, so that what I really enjoyed about being a model agent was I liked the creativity of the industry and I really enjoyed looking after people and helping them thrive and nurture. And then the fact that I could only help them to a certain extent and actually it wasn't, it, it wasn't even down to me whether or not they were successful or not. I found that after a while energetically, it, it, it kind of overwhelmed me. So I would go off and I started up my own um, uh, ethical brand. I had a range of belts, which I got made fair trade in India. I went traveling, I became a yoga teacher and I worked with small independent businesses doing um, customer service training for them. And this was all the different incarnations. Then I would come back to Models One because it was such a nice place to work with lovely people and be like, oh, now let's see. And I would, I looked after the hair and makeup artists and I looked after the older models. Well, older, I mean, you're 27, you're really old when you're a model, aren't you? You know, if you're working above that, but we, there's much more of that now. But at the time I'm when I was 27 when I was there at Models One, I was there from 2003 till 2008 or nine, beginning of, end of 2008. So I was there for five and a half years. And it, the thing is, it's just so nuts, isn't it? And this is why we've set up Hive Minded. And I'll tell you about, about that in, in a little while. But it's like, you're an individual, you're a person, and, and you're in an industry doing a job as a model. And then all of a sudden, I mean, 27 is quite old for most models. You know, most models finish their career by the time they're like 23. You know, they start when they're really young, like 15 or 16 or something like that, have their stint, and then they're done. And it's like, oh, well, well, who am I now? What, what am I going to do with my life? You know, and... This is what we want to help people to do is to be like, look, you are a really unique, amazing person. You have got talent and you've got skills and don't let all the negativity about the fact that you're, you don't fit the clothes and you're, and you're not good enough and you, we don't want you anymore uh, affect you. You know, we want to help people to use the time of modeling, which can be great if you're earning some nice money, you've got time to study, you've got time to grow, and then you've got the ability to leap into the next incarnation as yourself and that's what life's all about it's about growing and being different things at different times you know it's boring to stay still I well I think so anyway yeah, yeah. well of course so you've got to keep it moving you've got to my motto in life is keep it moving because if it yeah. if something's not working you've got to you've got to try another way you've got to try another way but Josie also I'm quite interested because you know we've connected this year you you you, you connected with me earlier in the year and we did a, a lovely project together for the NHS and helping Helping the um, helping the staff there with some of your beautiful intent there, with which I thought was lovely. So we created some beautiful content for the NHS, which I thought was great during the summer. Um, but we were also talking about your spiritual journey and your spiritual awakening. I think that's really interesting because you know you're a you're a bundle of health, you're a bundle of well-being, you're a bundle of joy, and I think that there's a 
there's a little secret in that. There's an undercurrent of what's what's going on in under the skin with Josie. So I'd be just really interested for you to share share about that too, because our paths could be parallel in this as well. That's probably why we've made this sort of lovely convergence again. I think so. And I think it's really about that. It's so interesting as you as you energetically change into a, a different frequency, as it were, that might not resonate with some of the of the audience, but I think it probably does with you. Um, you do start to certain people start to fall away. And as much as you may love them, you you realize, OK, your journey is now different to mine. And other people start to step back into your life and you start making new connections based on what's going on for you at the time. Um, so I, as I mentioned to you, I've always questioned. It's always been something in me who just doesn't take anything face value. You know, some of the, you know, I even found it when I was looking after the talent and the celebrities, you know, some of the, some of the information that was being kind of, well, basically I could just see through the whole illusion and I'd, and I'd already, already started to do that myself. Um, because I just didn't believe some of the stuff that was pushed out in the, in the media um, and some of the stuff that we were supposed to think was really interesting or really important. And yeah, just, you know, working behind the scenes and seeing how the illusion worked, it, it really cemented to me that there was more to find. So that was my last incarnation as a model agent, actually. And I went traveling, um, one, one of my traveling trips, I went and lived in Mexico. And when Whereabouts? Was this? Whereabouts in Mexico? So it was my second time living in Mexico and it was in Quintana Roo, um, uh, which is where uh, Tulum is. Um, I was going to say, I wonder if it's near Tulum. It, yeah, it is near Tulum. So where I ended up, where, where, we, where we ended up living. So I've got friends that live in Cozumel, which is where I lived before. Um, and it, we ended up basically living by, by the beach, um, uh, running a, a project for um, the local children, a recycling project and growing of plants. We were working with medicinal plants and um, yeah, doing some very interesting spiritual things there. Um, so anyway, so that was my last, let's get back to this. So that was my, that was after my last incarnation as a model agent. And one of the things that was really interesting was it, this was when Zika came out. So it was all of my friends who were thinking about coming over to visitors for Christmas were saying, oh, we can't come, there's Zika and we're gonna die. And this is all really Zika. Cool. What was that? Oh, that was a virus. Well, that was a whole thing. Yeah, yeah, it was a virus. Yeah, it, <laughs> okay. it was a, it was a, um, yeah, it, it was, it was some supposedly or really awful virus that was going to come and get you from mosquitoes and that you mustn't travel and, um, okay. you know, all of that kind of stuff. And I was like, it was one of those situations, right, where you're told one thing and you can see it all happening and then you're actually there and you're like, this isn't actually real life. This isn't. This isn't happening here. You know, my friends were saying, we can't come to Mexico because it's awful. And I was like, no, it's actually really nice. Everything's fine. You know, none of this is going on. So it really just, it, it kickstarted my, um, my next level of my spiritual journey. So I ended up getting pregnant and my, my husband said, I've got to go traveling on my own before we have a baby because I've wanted to do this my whole life. Well, he wasn't my husband yet, actually. He hadn't even proposed. He was my boyfriend. So he was like, oh, I've got to go off. I've got to fulfill my traveling alone mission and I was like oh my god I'm pregnant and it's 40 degrees and oh I know I'll, I'll go and do a, um, a 10 day silent med meditation retreat um, and I went and did that over on the west coast of Mexico and this was the second one that I'd done but this this one was when I had my heart centered moment this is when my I started to connecting in with being a heart centered being and rather than using this all the time to um well, to, to manifest my life, I started to live for my heart. So anyway, it was, it was game actually- Game changer, really, that's a game changing moment. It was the game changer, yeah, exactly. So I'd had lots of, I, you know, I'd, I'd already learned how to be a yoga teacher. I'd done meditation. I'd lived in an ashram. Um, I had, I'd done various different spiritual practices. Um, but this was, this was the, this was the thing that stepped me into my heart centered moment. And where I had been living in Mexico, I had been lent a book by a friend of mine who healed, um, who helped heal children, autistic children, I'm um, using dolphin therapy. So she yeah. would take children to these autistic children, we helped, you know, hold these children who were just, they were just so stressed out, there was so much trapped energy in them, and we'd take them to see this dolphin called Emisclay, and Emisclay would 
put in his sonar like he just would come straight up to them and he would just put in this sonar energy into these children sonar i, I don't know i don't think that's the right word sonar, yeah that's basically the sound frequency i mean I, yeah. I talked about this actually fairly recently but the sonar if people just uh, any any the sound frequencies have the ability to move trapped energy inside the body that's why mm -hmm. i mean i'm very auditory you said you were very kinesthetic. I produce music and I produce dance music because that's what I like making. But I also play the ukulele, which is a stark contrast to the mm -hmm. progressive house or dance music that I make. But that sound frequency moves energy in the body and, make, and moves your mood. So mm -hmm. the better you feel, um, it's amplified with beautiful music. And dolphins, because they're very pure and joyful in their energy, have that ability to transmit that sonar. And they often go for little kids and pregnant women first, if you ever go and swim with dolphins, because they know that that is naturally the energy that they can resonate with the most. So anyway, back to your interesting story of the trapped energy in the auti autistic kids. Yeah, okay, so this, so we, so my my husband and I um, went into the water with these, with these children, we, we helped out our friend, and it was wonderful to see the children just unfolding, you know, where they'd been really stressed out and angry before, not angry, but that, their energy was just really overwhelmed. You could see the tension in them and they went into the water and after they'd been in the water with the mesoclate, it they just changed completely. Oh. And Macy had these wonderful stories about children who hadn't been able to speak before, but after having, um, you know, a, a week's worth of therapy, then they'd been, they'd spoken their first words and then they would, they'd really, um, they'd, they'd completely changed their lives. So it was lovely to be part of it. And I mean, actually, interestingly, after that, um, I think about four days later, I got pregnant. So, and my son that? loves listening to dolphins. Like he oh. listens, uh, not every night now, but he used to listen to every night as he went to sleep, the sound of dolphins and whales. And yeah. that, that would put him to sleep. So, and it was so his those, choice. Those two creatures that like the, you know, like I'm fascinated by dolphins and whales anyway. Um, yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Huge. I mean, that's a whole new podcast about dolphins and whales in itself. Yeah, but definitely. Just, but, but they've been around on the planet for us a long time, you know, particularly yeah. the whales. So they are called what in spiritual terms are called like the record keepers. But yeah. <clears throat> it's always fascinating how nature is so soothing and healing. Um, and when you go off and have an adventure, and I always advise people, you know, whoever's listening is the more experience you can have and the more adventures you can have. When you come back, you're forever changed, aren't you? Because you get to see something, you get to experience something. Hopefully you've got to, to meet some new people and immerse yourself in a new culture and give yourself a completely different experience rather than the same old, same old, because you're never going to get out of that place. And what I love about your journey, Josie, is that you, you've kind of tried so many different things and you know now you've been building the hive minded habits and the hive minded habits is basically everything that you've learned you know logically and then taking that experience into wanting to create a platform and a community of well-being for you know for the model industry which is very unique because you know i feel like i was doing this to myself since i began modeling <laughs> And uh, it wasn't something I could necessarily express because there wasn't really anyone else doing what I was doing. I was, I was the only model that I knew meditating in the year 2003, doing it twice a day, doing all these spiritual practices, keeping myself really well, stop drinking, stop smoking dope, you know, <clears throat> and just carry on. <laughs> and, uh, and it was just like, well, why don't you drink? I was like, nah, I just, I've tapped into something else. I've tapped into this new energy of well-being that I can't even explain because if you if you're not there yet there's no point me trying to explain something that I, is almost unexplainable this 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 calmness this sense this centeredness you know and you, you you just feel like you know life's pretty good most of the time of course there are blips and challenges along the way but it's almost as if your path becomes like way steadier and there's less as louise hayes say bumps in the road but there's always a few bumps but you're able to to manage them and a little bit better but um so just tell us a bit about your hive minded habits and and so for the audience and what it's doing and what your intent is with that and how it's going to help people going forwards sure no worries okay so ray and i started hive minded back in it was february so we were we were invited to be part of a crowdfunding competition for female entrepreneurs and we raised a couple of thousand pounds and everything was flowing along very in, in a very positive way. 
Um, and in my in my past incarnation over the past over the past five years since leaving being a model agent, I've been working as a personal branding coach and I've been doing holistic sales and team building workshops for businesses. So luxury businesses and also working with individuals. So talented people, celebrities, singers, actors, various different types of people and helping people to step into their best incarnations of themselves. So it, it made sense for us to combine our skills. Ray has been 20 years a holistic therapist and she is also an award-winning um, dance instructor. So she spends her time inspiring women to love their bodies. She nice. does aerial, aerial fitness um, and she has people coming in feeling really, really bad about themselves. And <laughs> coming out... You say that so joyfully. People who feel really bad about themselves, go and see Ray and, you know, they'll be transformed after. Yeah, no, seriously. I mean, so I remember when she first started doing her company um, and so she was, she started out, she was doing pole dance and she was really enjoying it. And there was all the stigma, pole dancing, all that's for strippers, you know, all of this stuff. And, and she was, she loved it and she started getting into it and she basically just empowered this whole fantastic group of people to come together. And it's one of those things. This is one of, one of my major life lessons is that usually if things have got a stigma if you're told that it's bad if you step towards it you will discover the magic on the other side of it and this is I'm, i want to come back to this because this is this was my heart-centered moment how i how i came to my heart-centered moment was doing this was stepping towards a fear something i had an aversion to okay and this is the same with doing pole dancing so when you go into a class it's literally the most empowering place for women because you can't do pole dancing and aerial fitness on your own because you will freaking hurt yourself. It's you pretty fall. serious you acrobatic. You look after yeah. You. yeah, you're like upside down with your leg back here and all sorts of things. One, it's really <laughs> hard and really acrobatic. I cannot do it at all anymore, but I used to be able to. I need to get, get the old core going again. Um, but you have to support each other. So you have these, you know, you have these situations where you have these women just like cocooning each other, you know, that looking after each other, nurturing each other and and it, there's no competition it's all about oh, well done you achieved it you did really well it's all so positive and then you go to her showcases and it's the energy is electric like she's just this shining beacon because she just is an entertainer and she loves it and all of the the whole crowd is like 80 percent women and and these people getting up on stage and everyone's like whoa whoa whoa, whoa. like it, it i mean it's electric honestly i'm like getting shivers up my spine just thinking about it now of, of all of these people who just want everybody to be doing well they want to celebrate the success and they recognize that because they've worked together they've made this incredible achievement and so yeah it's our 40th year we realized that we we're on the same path we're like let's do this and it actually so this was all happening and then covid came along we're like oh okay so we we just we reeled for a bit i think as everybody did and and then we were like right come on let's crack on and, we'll, and we'll, so we started to do the key worker well-being series which we got you involved with which was a uh, what was it it was 12 videos um well-being videos which we pushed out to care homes um nhs trusts teachers schools all sorts of different people um because we were so appreciative uh, of of what all the key workers were doing when all of us were stuck at home and we really just couldn't think of anywhere any other way to start it just it just seemed so oh well everybody felt differently but it just all seemed so overwhelming but from then, from that point on, I realized the reason why I had kept working in the fashion industry for all those years, even after having these really strong feelings of feeling really frustrated because I couldn't help people to beyond what they looked like. It wasn't anything to do with who they were in their heart. It wasn't anything to do with their personality. It was all to do with what they looked like in their portfolio. I mean, and that was it. I mean the whole thing in modeling, you know, I've been modeling for like 20 years. I started in 2000. And, you know, the whole thing is, is the, it's the surface, isn't it? Yeah, this is the bit that may sell a picture. But it was for yeah. me, a bit like you in this instance, um, when I discovered from the inside out, if you're on the other side booking someone like me, well, I noticed that when I was actually on a shoot, it was the way I was feeling whilst I was being photographed, the way I was feeling yeah. that would predict, or should I say, I could predict how good a photo shoot would be. So the better I felt in a shoot, the greater that shoot and greater the, the turnout of the production, the greater the turnout of the pictures, you know, the whole campaign, the commercial, whatever it was, 
editorial, it would just turn out way better. And I found it was the exact opposite when I turned up and waited for someone to try and deduce from me like an emotion. But when yeah. I turned up and said, I'm going to feel good, I want this to be brilliant. You know, I want to bring something to the table today. I want to bring the best version of James to this shoot today. That's when yeah. things really managed to change. And I was always at the mercy at the beginning, thinking it was the other way around, you know, what do I do, yeah. you know? And, and, and it was only when I actually, you know, decided to turn that narrative around and make it all about what I'm going to bring. That's yeah. when I noticed that my career changed. Absolutely. And you've totally got it, James. And this is exactly the message that we're pushing out with Hive Minded. Mm. And um, you may have seen on Instagram, we did our successful model series. And I cover that in a couple of di the different videos that, that we did, which right. is about, about essentially have more fun at work, enjoy your work and bring the energy that you want to see there with you. Because, and this is what I learned from working with the celebrities and the talent is that all of, all of these successful people who we, well, we, uh, people aspire to be like, I, I want to be famous. I want to be a model. I want to be a singer. I want to have all of these different things. And, you know, there's such a, there's such a message that flows along like, oh, well, you know, you'll just fall into it. If you've got a reality show, you'll just fall into it. And it's like, no, it's not. The people that do really, really well consistently show up for themselves. They understand their brand. They know who they are. They get into the right energetic frequency and they make it happen for themselves. And they get there. Okay, so there are some people that just fall into things children of famous people, they know the right person, whatever. There are some of those things, but the majority of those people, they still stick to their brand. They know what they're doing. They have the right team around them and they work hard at it. They really, really do. And I, I love the fact that you recognize that because that is the difference between surviving and thriving. And th that's what Hive Minded is all about. It's about empowering models to understand their, their own abilities to create the, the life and the future that they want. So our passion is basically improving the emotional, financial and future well-being of models. And yeah. that is what it's our first, deal. pardon? It's a, big deal. it's a big deal that because, you know, that particular industry, you know, the industry of modeling as such, is that you get to see all the glamorous sides of the campaigns, the billboards, the TV ads, the fragrance ads, the editorials, the magazines. But the actual business behind it means you've got to turn up, you've got to go to the castings, then you get paid, but you might get paid six weeks to two months later for your job. So you've still got to keep your financial balance in that meantime, which might mean you need to get another job in the meantime. Plus, you've yeah. got to keep yourself fairly, you know, active. You, you want to be taking care of yourself. I mean, there's a... I knew guys who just partied all the time, did well, but then they'd blow out. So, but for me, like I started modeling late and I started at 25 mm -hmm. and I started late as a model as such. I was a little, little late bloomer. I looked about 18 when I was 25 anyway, so it made much difference. But that emotional well-being is huge because you're, you're in, in, a, in an industry where people are dictating, as you said earlier, what you're looking like versus you know, how you feel about yourself. There's no self-reference in initially. And mm. I think that what you're doing is helping people become more self-aware and yeah. then give them the tools to actually balance and create a, you know, a really wonderful career and try and make the best out of it, have some fun out of it and make some good money out of it simultaneously. Definitely. And, you know, as, as you and I know, manifestation of what you want is all about your own internal energy. Has if you be. are blocking your money, if you are blocking, if, if you say, if you internally say to yourself every day, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthwhile, I wouldn't pay me, well, then nobody else is going to, no one's going to book you. No. You know, if you turn up and if you turn up on a job and you sit there and you're, you genuinely feel really bad about yourself, you're not going to get, you're not going to get asked back, you're not going to get rebooked. So there's so much that can be done. And I think a lot of people and myself in the past included, you just resign yourself to what there is. Oh, well, that's it. That's, that's the way life is. And, and that's, and that's a conditioning and it's a conditioning that we've got to step out of. That's also so like some people accepting, are accepting reality as it is, which mm. is good to a certain extent in, you know, Eckhart Tolle's the power of now, accept it if you can't do anything about it. But if it's negative and it's not really helping you and it's not serving you and, and it's a, it's a way that you're thinking about yourself. Well, you can change how you think about yourself. Your thoughts can either make you healthy or they can make you sick. They can either make you yeah. more confident in time or they can make you, you know, paralyzed. 
I mean, for yeah. me, there was a point in time when I was really confident, lost my confidence because I cared what other people thought. Yeah. And it took me, I, I'm not kidding you, it took me about three years to come round out of that again. And until I realised I was like, you know, it's how I see myself. It's not how other people see me. And, you know, I think that what you're doing could help bring back that level of confidence, that healthy esteem, that healthy self-appreciation which which yeah. can change essentially what comes to you like the opportunities like because when you go into a casting you know the potential clients can either smell that you're desperate which will always repel yeah you know? so if you yeah, really absolutely. need and want a job because you've got no money in the bank well I guarantee you're not going to get that job uh, you're really not you're really not you're There's literally not gonna get that. Away. So if there's any potential models or people looking to get into the industry or people in the industry you know this and it's the same in acting. You know, Matthew McConaughey said it in his book, Green Lights. He told his booker in L.A. said, go away on holiday. If you've got enough money in the bank, go away on holiday. If you if you smell like you're needing a job because you haven't had one in eight months, go away on holiday and come back if you've got enough cash. Because I don't want to have anyone in this house, because he was living with his, his agent at the time, who's going to be having that desperate vibe that desperate energy going on that's law of attraction in work and it's the same in modeling and it's the same in any industry so get creative get feeling good about yourself and the key thing here is this is what i've noticed and i think that this is exactly what you're doing is stop comparing yourself to other people yes because that is the thief of joy and if you're comparing yourself to other people which is so easy to do when there's however many people on the models one board or whatever agency you're, Mm. you're in with you know if you're comparing yourself to what other people look like or what other people are doing and how they're achieving, you, you're going to just completely let go of your power. You know, that energy, that positive vibe, which you're going to be sending out. I had a period of about six months when I just booked everything and I made so much cash and I was like, what am I doing? And it was, I wasn't caring what anyone else was doing. I was caring about how I was feeling, which at that time was really good. And mm-hmm. I just, one thing after another, after another, and more cash came in, more cash came in. And I was like, what am I doing? And then I, then I, then it stopped because I was looking at about what other people were doing. It's so interesting that you just said that. So one of my coaching clients, um, I was working with her on one of, on our session. We have a weekly session and I was working with her two weeks ago and we, were, and we were putting together a plan of like, what is it, you know, how much money would you like to be earning each month? You know, just really sort of doing some goal setting. And she said, okay, 25,000 pounds a month. And so we were like, okay, fine. And we were doing some work all around that and making sure that we were stepping towards that goal. And interestingly, since then, she has modeled every single day since that point. And so, you know, she's a, she's a model who's in her early forties. So usually it's like, yeah, work comes along here and there, you know, every now and again, you get something coming in. She's like, Josie, I can't do a session. I'm, I'm working. I'm in London. Like I've got jobs on every day. And, you know, just her creating that intention and allowing that space for her to say, yeah, I do deserve to have 25, 25 grand a month. Yes, I do. And I do want that. And she's asked the universe and the universe is providing. And she's also, I love that. I love that. And it's a great story, but it's also the level of what you can believe that you can allow in. Exactly. So if yeah, you don't deep. think you can allow in 25 grand a month, then you're not. Absolutely. But, it's, it's all about that. But I think what people will do, you know, if they're interested working with you, which I know people will be, absolutely, and is that I think you should work with Josie because she's going to tell you where you're at and how far you can stretch yourself to be able to go. And that's the key with working with a coach, isn't it? Because, you yeah. know, yes, of course, we can find all the information that we want out there. Yes, we can go it alone. Yes, we can do it. But we're only as good as the quality of the questions that we ask or that people ask us. And how do you know what you're looking for if, if nobody's helped you to get there? And that's the whole thing of working in unison with somebody. So, I mean, I've, I've got various mentors that I, that I work with for different things, and I'm sure you do as well. I People do, that inspire yeah. me every day. And, and that's the beauty of being somebody who loves to learn and grow because, oh, there's so much to learn. And it's so exciting. It, you know? stretches your, it stretches what your capabilities are. You know, like I've got, I coach people and they are doing yeah. extremely well. And yeah. you know, I've got a, a lovely lady I'm coaching and she's just winning everything right now. <laughs> she's nice. winning. And she goes, oh, I've just managed to tap into this natural state of well-being. I was like, this is what happens. This positive energy becomes contagious and it just keeps mm-hmm. magnetizing in all this good stuff. 
Mm. And um, I've got this thing about attracting like five star holidays and winning l lotteries and things like that, that. I just keep doing all the time and I don't even try. But because there's no resistance when I think about it. Um, but every if you're coaching somebody, you also need someone to stretch you. So I have to have a coach and then they have to have somebody. Yes. And it yes. keeps on going up and up because we need to have that sense of accountability. Number one, I think, at least yeah. that's my experience. And in that accountability, it's like helping you drive towards what you're wanting. Yes, you know? yes, definitely. And that's why one, I love working with Ray, which is fantastic because we, you know, we're always stepping towards that goal. And if one of us has an off day, the other's like, come on, we've got this, let's do this. Or she can step in and work with our team and keep things moving forward. Mm -hmm. And that's why we wanted to set up the Future Models Network, which is what we're gonna be launching early next year and because it's all about community you know we're taught so much especially when you're a model or you're an actor or an entertainer you know everybody's taught about well you've got to have your own personal brand you've got to stand out from the crowd and i teach that myself you know and it's true it's just that why do you have to step on everybody else to get there you know what you what we want to be trying to do in our community is to all work together towards our own individual goals and also common goals so that everybody who is within the network is boosting each other up so if somebody has a launch then everybody's everybody's pushing for them everybody's putting their energy to them and if, if people are feeling down they've got others who understand them and who support them and it's it's basically the ultimate networking community for models or that 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 is the intention anyway that's great and and i think that positive you know, vibes. combine that with the, the financial aspect of it i think yeah. it creates this lovely shape to it because you know when you first start modeling or even you get going you need to have that balance because once that level once you've got that sort of harmony of being able to look after your cash for a while, you know, and you've got that steady, what happens is it frees up the energy so you can really go for what you want. Because yes. otherwise yes. you're constantly in the back of your mind going, oh, you know, where's my next, when's my next job, you know, which pr creates that desperate dog, you know, that dog feeling that you have the, with the casting directors. You don't want to have that feeling because that's when I call the dog barks at you syndrome. You know, if you've got the fear, the dog will bark at you or if you, yeah, you know, so that's why when you swim with sharks, if you are relaxed and calm, you're less likely to be sending off that frequency because the sharks can pick up on the, the, the erratic feelings that you have in the, across the water. And it's very much the same as if you're doing that in real life when you're going to a casting or you're going for an interview in a job or you're going to job your job every day anyway. Whatever it is, it's always the vibes you're sending out. Is yeah. what's going to come back yeah exactly a hundred percent that and it, it's just it's one of those really frustrating perpetual cycles isn't it um in in um in january actually we're going to have a, a a free five-day challenge which is all about minding your money and basically working with people to understand how what they've actually been doing their whole life is attracting no sorry is detracting money is pushing money away by their energetic frequency and it's exactly what you're talking about now it's like oh, it, and that's great particularly in this industry as well you know from from yeah. someone who's having gone from having it to not having it to having it again you're like wow okay this is great and then then it just keeps going up once you get steady and it's yeah. all about that sort of steadiness and you know that's really what i'm all about and you know the podcast is all about creating that sense of well-being that calmness so you can access these higher levels of energy which just exist and keep you bubbly like your good self and myself yeah. And um, yeah, Josie, it's been absolutely wonderful talking to you. I'm um, loved every minute of this. I could keep going on. Um, for the, where can people reach you, Josie? Where can people find you? Um, what are your social media links and things like that where people can get to know more about like the the uh, the high minded habits and the you know the the launch for the Models Future Network? Cool. Okay, so. What we've got at the moment, um, everything can be found on Instagram. We are on Facebook too, but Instagram is kind of the hub. I know we know that that's where models are. We know um, that that's the best place for us to be. Yeah. So come and check us out over there. It's at Hive Minded Habits. 
and we have our VIP um, affiliate sign up waiting list, um, which is live at the moment. And this is the opportunity to earn whilst you are learning and growing. So it, it's recognizing that that very specific issue that models have, which is that they don't have regular income. And so that they can step out of that feeling of constant fight or flight and actually work on keeping their energy high. Um, we, have, we have developed this really um, high rate affiliate scheme, which is 35% of everything um, Everyone that you attract to the membership and everybody that you attract to any of the products that we sell, there's going to be some really high ticket ones coming in 2020 and 2021, you will earn your commission from. So it gives people the opportunity to have a regular income coming in, uh, even if it starts small and it's then scalable, just having that knowledge that you've definitely got some money coming in is something that is, well, according to the models that we've been speaking to recently, it's something that they would really, really welcome. So yeah, uh, early sign up is happening now and then we will be launching in uh, January, hopefully, all being well with all being well, yeah. stuff going on in the world. Below yeah. here for you. But you know, like if, you, if you're a, a budding model and you're in the, I definitely recommend going checking out what Josie is doing because having that extra cash coming in will put and soothe your mind and you're going to learn from Josie and the Hive Minded Habits group for this Future Models Network because they're going to help you get your energy to that state where you start attracting really good jobs because exactly. you're learning, you're growing, you're attracting jobs. It's a win-win all round. So definitely go and check that out. Josie, thank you so much for coming on the show. I've loved talking to you. Love your energy. Um, you know, you've uplifted me. And, yeah, um, you don't live to be too, James. Thank you. It's a delight <laughs> having you on the show, my darling. And, um, and I'll put all the links and stuff here below. Thank you for checking out the James Garson podcast show. If you liked it, please give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Um, and please subscribe and please share. Go check out Josie's um, Hive Minded Habits and the Future Models Network, which will be out soon. I'll have all the links here at once again. But thanks as always. And I wish you green lights all the way. <laughs>